Uh, can you tell us about your time in ECW and what Paul Heyman is like to work with? <laughs> Yo. You know, uh, Remy, you sure you're not loading this He's like, hour. see um, into the future. No, no. Uh, the time at ECW, it was a weird time in my life, too. So Luna and I were like, like boom, boom, boom. There's a lot of uh, substance abuse problems, a lot of, a lot of shit on a higher, darker level that I wasn't on or could be a part of certain drugs and stuff. So we were clashing a lot. Um, in fact, it would just probably home a lot too much too with each other. It doesn't help, right? So I was trying to make it still and be somewhere like uh, I was doing Japan here and there, doing other things. But I don't. I hadn't been to WWE yet, but I was being flown in to all the uh, dark matches, not dark matches, but the TVs. I was being flown to all the TVs, and I would give people literally tryout matches. Where I worked as a Black Phantom a lot in that time. So. Uh, ECW, I had a chance to go up there, and I think when I went up there, they had me work Hack Myers, like rest in peace, Hack. And I went out there, and then immediately, immediately, they said, "Oh, you got a match with Tommy." And I think they expected to, to to blow me up and go out there and take advantage of it. But then the match, the match was with, with Tommy Dreamer. It was only one match. I think it got like uh, nominated for Feud of the Year. Feud of the Year. Oh, wow. It was just like one match, so it seemed like it was a big feud and all that. But it was just one match, and it, it was a fun match. But I had a chip on my shoulder going in because all this the crap going on with me and Luna and then ECW, that company, it was just uh, there was so much drugs and so much chaos. It was, it was an organized chaos, but it was a lot of chaos. And I kind of went in there and made a stand for myself. There had been some issues in J- a Japan tour with uh, the, uh, you know, what the heck were their names? Uh, they passed away. Uh, the Eliminators. They were Perry Saturn and his partner. Oh, Cr- yeah. Cron, so I've never seen that eye with Perry. That goes, and it goes all the way back into WWE too. Like later later years. Never seen that eye. He actually ran out of the building with his suitcase. But um, it's another story for another day. Write it down. But, <laughs> but Pauly, I don't think, ever really liked me. I, I think the point was they were just bringing me in to like kind of clown me. But it didn't go the way they thought it would go. I mean, I could be wrong. And then I just kind of stood my ground and weathered it out. And the people didn't really crap on me or anything like that. Like, I have a good rapport with the Philly fans and different things. So it just never panned out. And then something happened where WWE, F at the time, said, like, they're flying me to all the TVs. And they go, hey, you got to come in on on Fridays. They started making everybody come in on Fridays and Saturdays for the for the Monday TVs. They wanted you in earlier. Whatever reason they were doing that, I don't know. Um, I guess to make sure they had everybody there and stuff like that. So... I said, oh, I'm doing ECW stuff. And the WWF said, you got to make a decision. So literally, I made a decision to stay with ECW. And when I made a decision, they started <laughs> started trying to like just get rid of me. Mm-hmm. And then WWE didn't use me. But then they worked. They started working with ECW like that next week. Like So I felt like it was just a giant weird rib. And it, it could have just been, uh, what, what was that timing? Uh uh, well, not bad time, bad timing for me, but but coincidental, you know, it mm-hmm. could have been coincidental, but I felt like they knew the whole time and, and, and stuff like that. But they made everybody fly in early WWE, but they made me make a choice, you know. I said, well, I can't do both. I can't just go there. They go now. Mm-hmm. So I had to make a choice, but then I felt maybe I took it more personal there because everything was so off uh, in my relationship with her. And then when I was in the ECW, it just felt like everything was just like potentially to, 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 to not hurt me, but to to just clown me or make, just make me feel so at you. But maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just me that had a chip on my shoulder at personal time. But uh, Polly, I just, just never really trusted that much. Let's uh, let's just wrap up both Pandora's. Uh, okay, wrap it up. Okay, so <laughs> we, we will save the rest for the next time. And oh, uh, wait, yeah, we okay. should also mention, though, whatever questions that you have for Gangrel, uh-huh. David Heath, uh, leave them on, what, YouTube? I mean, where, where are people? Instagram? Okay, go. Go and subscribe to YouTube, please. Even if you're listening to it on uh, Spotify or iTunes or whatever, but but uh, go subscribe YouTube, like subscribe. But leave, most of the YouTube, where are, you, where are they reading them at? Raymond YouTube is that where you're getting these messages YouTube, from? So Facebook, so um, YouTube and Facebook. But I, I notice a lot of these. I've read some of these on, but they come in on my email, so they come in uh, YouTube. So yeah, do what you're doing, keep doing them, but make sure you like and subscribe and share it, please.